Luther Kruger here, Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, based in Minneapolis, and I'm here in beautiful Tucson. Uh, it's not too hot yet <laughs> today, uh, with Bill Cunningham, with a, a, an incredible cooker here, a box cooker, that is, uh, I mean, I love it, because, like, what'd you say you called it, the what? The forever oven. The forever oven. It's it's going to last forever, and uh, uh, was lucky enough to connect with Bill, what, I don't know, maybe February or so, to say, uh, hey, I'd love to buy it. He says, sure, well, and so I'm here, and I'm getting it. <laughs> okay. Well, so tell me, what where did you come up? Actually, first start with solar energy in any way, shape, or form. How did you get into that? So being in Arizona, everybody was back in the 70s. Yeah. Solar was just starting to be talked about, and, and I found out that you could... Uh, if you put your windows on the right side of the house, you could heat your house in the winter with the sun. And it, in the summer, the sun goes north, and then in the winter, it goes south. And so I got interested in solar energy. And I had been an engineering student at Purdue back, you know, 10 years earlier, and I didn't really want to do tra traditional mechanical engineering. Sure. And when I got interested in solar, I went down to the U of A, and I said, well, if I want to get into solar energy, what would I study? And then it was all... Solar was all thermal at that point. It was before PV. And they said, mechanical engineering. You got heat transfer, fluid mechanics, and all this stuff that you're going to need. So I went back to the U at age 28, and I got my degree in mechanical engineering. Sure. And then photovoltaics came out. And in the meantime, I had this idea that you got to be able to solar cook with making a box, glass, insulation, mirrors. And I had never seen one, but I got the idea. It's like... Well, I, I'm going to build something. So I bought a uh, an in-the-wall oven that was like at an auction sale for 50 cents, just like a, you put it in your, in your wall. Probably didn't work, but it, 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 it was a nice door, and it was about a two-foot by two-foot by two-foot box. And um, I brought it home. I cut the top off with a cold chisel. That was primitive tools back in those days. Put glass on it. Put it on casters where I could rotate it around and everything and I and I made a solar oven that had a door in the back that you could open up and it was nice but it wasn't the right shape it wasn't optimal but I could cook food in there sure. and so that was my first solar oven in 1975. Was that the Barbara Kerr cooker design or? I hadn't seen anybody's design this was okay. strictly my <laughs> like. That's probably in the same same uh, time frame that she did one at the at the uh, uh, sustainable uh, living center in yeah. Taylor Arizona. Right. Yeah yeah through the so, wall oven, yeah. So, so that was my oven for quite a while, and you know, you could cook beans and rice and meat and stew. You could cook everything, and it only got up to about 250 because it was just, it wasn't really ideal. Sure. But uh, that got me started, and then a few years later, uh, I ran into a guy, Ed, Ed Eaton, oh, came yeah. to, to talk to me when I was, I was working at the U of A after I graduated from there, and he goes, we want to have a solar potluck, and he was dreaming up this solar potluck, and I didn't realize all these other people were doing solar cooking. Well, we had our first solar potluck, and I think it was either 1981 or 1982. Have you have you interviewed Eddie? Uh, yes, I did uh, by Zoom. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. in uh, Colorado, right? Yeah. Peonia, I think it is. So he was the yeah. father of the Tucson solar potluck, and that's it's still going. We missed a couple of years during COVID, yeah. but it was the longest continuously operating solar cooking event, and there have been several solar cooking events around yeah. the world, as you as you well know. Sure. And then you get to see what everybody else is doing, and boy, there were some simple things, you know, like a tire. Throw it in there, and you put, you know, a cook a cook bag, a bake bag, and you throw a pot in there, and you've got something black. And yep. people were cooking food with just the simplest things. It was really interesting. Sure. So the solar pollock I've been heavily involved with all those years, and I even ran it for a while. I had moved away, and I was the kind of the chairman of that and organizer sure. of it. And so... But then eventually it evolved into, you know, I mean, there was the prototype for this one back there. You might want to get a shot of that. It's oh, pretty sure. much the same dimensions, but that one was galvanized, and it's already rusting away. That's, oh, probably, yeah. that's probably 30 years old. Still works. I still cook my lunch in it, um, but it's it's rusting away. Sure, sure. Um, so anyway, it evolved into this. I call it the Forever Oven Polished Stainless Mirrors, which we have not peeled the protective film off yet. The whole box on the outside is stainless steel. The inside is uh, heavy gauge aluminum. I think it's uh, about 24 gauge aluminum to conduct the heat into the cold spot of the food. Um, the, let me show you how to put the glass on here. The, the glass just sits on here. 
going to be on, we're going to get some felt and put there so that it sits on a, a wool felt strip. And oh, I'm sure. I'm having trouble getting this. I used to just be able to buy it at Ace Hardware in the Home Depot. Nobody's selling anymore. I ordered it online. It's not here. I'll have to mail it to you. Sure. And the felt, it'll sit on the felt. Or there's another alternative, which would be a bronze uh, weather stripping, which is kind of like a spring spring bronze. We might, you might, we might try that. Mm -hmm. So um, this oven has a um, a condensate drain. Of course, as you as your food gets done, it's going to oh, start yeah. putting all the moisture on the glass, and you're going to get condensation. Run. That's how you know your food's done is when you get that condensation in there. It's like, hey, it's probably done. It's going to run down. It's going to water's going to collect in this trough and it'll come out the tube the little brass tube there so you won't be filling up the insulation with with moisture and stuff like that which all bake out it's like sure. it's not a big deal but yep. um, so it's got a condensate drain in it and um, mirrors and glass and insulation and yeah. it's a simple you know that's any, a, anybody can do it that's the combination catch the energy concentrate the energy yeah keep the energy in <laughs> And this yeah. is the, this is like the family size oven. This we cook a we cook a small turkey, maybe a 14 pound turkey in the middle of winter, like at the end of November. Um, as long as you got a sunny day, you can you can cook a 14 pound turkey in this oven. Yeah. I heard they take these things like the um, the Global Sun oven. They take these up on uh, Mount Everest yeah. at base camp. They throw them in the snow, and it's lighter than carrying fuel tanks up there. Oh, yeah. And they cook whatever temperature it is with in the snow on Mount Everest. You cook your food. It's not about how hot it is outside. Right. It's about how intense, and the sun is more intense up oh, there. You got, you got no, almost no atmosphere left yeah, you got, to block it. So yeah. you can cook food up there. Wow. Well, this, I, I'll say it again. It's a thing of beauty. I've always been of the opinion, and I've been solar cooking for almost 50 years, that you're never going to start a fire or be in any danger if you've got flat mirrors. Mm -hmm. Not true. Not true. Not true. <laughs> I can so, mm -hmm. about three years ago, I get a call from my neighbor, and they're like, "Oh, Rich, don't call me unless something's going on." I'm in town driving around. And he goes, "Bill, you got a fire out here," <laughs> and I he, I back I got a passive solar house. I back up heat with with a wood stove, and my cord of mesquite and juniper wood <gasps> caught on fire. It was right next to this oven. Oh. And it must have been the oven, and I don't think it was arson. I don't think somebody yeah. came by and tossed a match. There's a lot of sawdust laying around there. But the, the oven is usually up on a big stand like that, and I had put it on the ground because it was going to blow off anyway, and it's sitting on the ground. And the mirrors can take enough of a curve yeah. when there's wind blowing, and those mirrors are old and kind of saggy. They're not straight, and the solar oven had to have started the sawdust on fire. Yeah. And it could have burned my house down. It oh, could have burned man. the neighborhood down. We were really lucky that all I lost was a wood pile. But straight mirrors, you got to be careful with these solar ovens. They can start fires. Just be aware. Yep. So we got this little saying. I'm sure you've heard it. Take the heat out of the kitchen. Cook in your backyard. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and in the summer, you don't want to be turning on your oven. Oh, no. You know, and yeah. so it's got that benefit. It's going to save you a little on your air conditioning bill. Yep. Well, and even in the winter in Minnesota, I mean, because you know, the windows are closed, uh, our house is, it's an old 1899 fixer-upper, not very well insulated, but boy, you know, if you're cooking for a big, big family dinner, you know, that kitchen is going to be almost unbearable. And so we cook as much yeah. outside when we can, even right. in the winter. Yeah. So but, another, we're talking, we mentioned Rob Crossland, who you're going to see in a few minutes, another another yep. funny story with that involved him. He was my technician. We were installing a big photovoltaic system out at a ranch out in the boonies, um, and Rob likes to, likes to do all the solar cooking. He's made all these solar ovens and stuff. So he brings a, a Tulsi hybrid solar oven oh, sure. up there to this ranch. And, and it's a cloudy day. And I got this third guy working for me who doesn't solar cook and doesn't really know much about the stuff. Rob takes his Tulsi. You know what a Tulsi hybrid yeah. oven is, yep. okay? They don't make those anymore, unfortunately. He puts it down and he puts his soup or his lunch in there to heat up. And it's pretty much cloudy. And... The other guy is like, kind of like snickering and laughing like, huh, how's that going to work? You know, look at this guy. How's that going to work? And Rob says, grab me that, grab me the food out of there. And the guy goes up and he doesn't have gloves on or anything. And, and he, whoa, yeah, you okay. know, I got burned <laughs> yeah. on a cloudy day. Hello. This thing is like, you know, way too hot to pick up yep. with your hands. His, his lunch was heated up. It was, yep. but it's like people wouldn't realize what you can do on a cloudy day because it's, 
these uh, non-parabolic, non-concentrating ovens get all the diffuse solar yes. energy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a direct beam where you're bouncing it with mirrors. These things will generate a lot, of, as well as photovoltaics. Well, on a cloudy day, you'll make half of what you made on sure. a sunny day. You know, yeah. and a, a solar water heater, it's going to get all that heat. So it doesn't have to be direct sun yeah. to do some good. And these ovens are included oh, in yeah. that. Diffuse energy works good. Yeah. I actually interviewed uh, David Chalker, who bought Sun BD Corporation, which, if I recall correctly, they made the Tulsi. Because I had right. ordered the Tulsi, and yeah. he told me when I interviewed he said, yeah, I remember when you ordered the Tulsi from me. He's gone and made a box cooker, too, because that was a, Tulsi was a plastic body. Right. He says, I want, there's too much plastic in the world, and he found an industrial strength cardboard one, which which actually made it, he was able to, like, expand it by half again as much space. Uh -huh. Still have the, uh, it's like a, a silicone heating mat that does the heating of the hybrid part where you can right. plug it in and uh so he did and uh i interviewed him about that that was uh that was great i mean it was every time i hear someone say i'm switching from classic to whatever okay i'm, I'm gonna yeah. edit yours first before all the others because i want well so anything else you can tell me about the cooker or any other ideas you have for so we're gonna we're gonna take it apart mm -hmm. and uh we can talk nuts and bolts here i i put some self drillers in here to get sure. it together quick yep the uh what I usually do is little nuts and bolts, and you can take your pick. I'll send you home with two mm -hmm. sets of hardware. Oh, this, beautiful. This is quick, you know, it's like this, oh, just, yeah. but then it's, yep. it's sharp. You got these things. You might not want to use the self drillers. And then you, we're going to take these off, of course, and there's like mm -hmm. three screws in each mirror. There's none in the back because that's just sitting there. Sure. And I've got it marked with a felt pen as to where it goes because it's kind of tricky to get that oh, off sure. when you put that back on there. Um, I find it easier to like maybe build this build this whole mirror thing just sitting on the ground yeah and then get a partner and set it on here sure uh you could do it a, a mirror at a time but it's mm -hmm. i don't know there's multiple ways to so it's it. like uh four three four three there's marked down there or yeah four four three three two two one 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 two three it's the corners sure so that's how they go together okay. so, so if in case there's they should they should be interchangeable, but they might not. So yeah. I'd figure, yeah. why not mark them? And then once you peel that uh, film off, you're going to have to maybe mark it. Maybe, maybe it should be marked on the, on the back or yeah. something. Yeah, we will so do you, that. So you yeah. got a, a pen and mark it. So well, I don't think we've seen, showed them the door, the back door. On the yeah, what's, yeah. So you, the glass is just sitting there. It's not going to be screwed down or attached. And you could put food in through that side, but it's much easier to use the, the back door here to do it. Yeah. Big enough opening to put just about anything you can imagine in there. Mm -hmm. um, well, the uh, uh, David Omek and Pearl Mast, they're in their... Um, Cascabel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the one on the post. He did He did a great job. Oh, it's beautiful. And, wow. and uh, Interesting you found them and found yeah, that. Yeah, I, he's on my channel. I, did, I interviewed them. It's like it's got the, you know, you can turn it this way and this way. Yep. It's brilliant. And, and he was one, him and, uh, oh, this guy in... Uh, Zamora, California, just big flat desert area in Northern California. Both of them said, we got to have the door in the back, you know, for five or six different yeah. reasons. And uh, yeah. the biggest complaint about the sun oven, oh, it gets beautiful high temperatures, but boy, having to do this and, wow. the, and the, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. so, so this is, that's, that's the ticket. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're going to need to weather strip the door here too. Sure. Gaps. You're going to want to put oh, yeah. something along here here yep. and here you can see we'll look in, in that one and, oh yeah um, oh and yeah, i just be... silicone that felt oh sure just you know yep that's silicone, what i did with the uh, with... right on yeah the so halosy model i did that yeah uh, it's probably coming apart in here because some of it's gone yeah one one piece is gone there's the oh sure there's yep. the felt that's what i yep. ordered this this one piece is gone but you might have to double it up if there's if oh there's yeah a bigger gap it might have to be double thickness yep. for part of it or something sure. like that <laughs> that has blown another interesting little story that's usually down at my house, which is down the down the scary driveway there. That has blown off this stand twice, oh, hit man. the ground, didn't break, yep. put it back up. And I keep a brick in here. You yeah, see, I see that. The brick is to, if you don't have a heavy load of food in there, that'll keep it from blowing sure. over. And sometimes I put, I'll put two in there because we get 60, 70 mile an hour gusts of yep. wind. So I keep that in there as long as it's up. If it's on the ground, it's not going to really matter because it might it might tip, but it yeah. won't really. That oven's blown blown off, blown over sure. several times. And then just a few little spare parts to take along here. 
I make these for wedging. It's a wedge. Oh yeah, sure. So you can yeah. aim it if you got this on something. You, know, you can put mm -hmm. it there, there, there. And sure. In the in the extreme winter, yeah. you might need to tip it up. But usually this oven doesn't really need to be done that too. But you might as well have that. You can yeah. use that on your on your other ovens and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so that worked out really well. Yep. One more screw here. Okay. Let's go. Perfect. Well, great. Any any other final words before I turn off cameras? And... Well, happy happy cooking. <laughs> yes. Uh, you. <laughs> you will never go hungry if you have all these. Well, I guess that's not the food issue, but. <laughs> Okay, that comes off. Yeah,